picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Welcome back. Yes, folks, it is a new week. It is, uh, oh, it's the second week in May. Uh, things are picking up steam as we roll into Wonderfest and starting a new project today. And uh, that new project is this. Of course, I, I, I got into this thing where I want to create all this mystery about what the new kit is, what the new project is. And then I slap a picture of it on my introduction and I write it in the description. So there's no sense of keeping any mystery. It is the Discovery. It is the uh, Star Trek Discovery from the uh, series of the same name. And whatever you think about the series, I don't want to hear about it. We're talking about the model. If you got a problem with it, skip ahead because uh, I'll be building something more comfortable for you next week. But this is what we're building. We're building the Discovery and there are three very important things you should know about this kit. And let's go to the table. Sorry, I need to clean the table off. I have a bit, but uh, it's very similar in color to the paper that I've got on the table. There are three very important things you should know about this discovery kit. A, it is small. B, it is tiny. And C, it is very wee. Uh, it's, it is so small, in fact, I'm going to take into calling it the Discover Wee. Because, you know, hopefully there will be a larger version of this uh, release in the future. But for now, this is the Wee Discovery, or the Discover Wee. Um, it is... So small, in fact, that um, you might mistake it for the Christmas ornament. But no, in fact, here is the Christmas ornament, and it's a little bit bigger. Come on, it's about a third again, or half again as big, or bigger than the uh, the uh, Christmas ornament that came out last year. And by God, if they can light the Christmas ornament, if I hit the button, if they can light the Christmas ornament... I could certainly light this, and that's the intent of this kit. Um, and I gotta tell you, the decals that come with this kit are some of the most gorgeous decals I have ever seen. Just look at the detail. Now, in my heart of hearts, I would be making painting templates for all of that. But when you get down to the fact that it won't focus, when you get back down to the fact that there's all kinds of fi very fine lines um, there's just no way to, to replicate that with vinyl. So we are going to be using the decals as they are, but that does not mean we won't be painting this kit and lighting it and doing some painting. I mean, I'm going to be replacing some of the decals with painted surfaces just because. Um, but uh, um, my goal is to light this up at least as well as the ornament and probably better, one would hope. Um, and it's also nice because it gives me a chance to stretch with my metallic finishes because this is all in metallics. It's all coppers and, uh, titanium golds and silvers and, and, uh, not really a gun metal, but a metallic gray, which is kind of different than gun metal. And it, you paint them and then you wrap those beautiful decals over top of it. It's wallpaper decal, people. You know how I feel about wallpaper decals. But when a kit is this small uh, and this tiny and this wee, um, there are fear of precious few alternatives. Nobody would be expected to paint all of that detail. So, um, first thing we need to do is to uh, clean up the parts and light block them as we are going to because when once you put these two things together there's not a heck of a lot of room in between we're going to be running uh, surface mount LEDs with um, magnetic wire uh, wiring off of those bulbs and they take up the least amount of channel room but they still take up some this is about the only area in the secondary hull that I've got that I can compact my wiring into. These areas here that touch, I'm going to have to channel, I'm going to have to see how much uh, needs to be channeled out to go out to each of these. There's barely enough room. I have tried an idea that's going to work, I think. There's barely enough room in here to, to cram some uh, SMLEDs, which I've got on order from Evan's lighting. I'm hoping those will arrive. I've got enough to get started, but certainly not enough to get finished. 
So I'm hoping that by midway or midweek, I will be getting the rest of the bulbs that I need. But the, uh, the thing I need to do is, is mask off the clear parts and uh, paint the insides of things to light block. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. Good morning. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. Welcome to the table. O mess. And, um, Believe it or not, work is actually progressing on the uh, Wii Discovery here. Um, I had to order. I was doing a quick check of LEDs, and I was realizing I was short. I was running out. I had to order some more from Evans Lighting. And uh, while I was waiting, I figured out, well, that's going to put me in a that's going to put me in a holding pattern while I'm waiting for these bulbs to come in, and that's not good. So I was trying to figure out what I could do while I was waiting, and. Um, then I, I, I was checking out something, and it happens that I have uh, I have a, a finite number of Picos, or chip size and nano size SM LEDs, which are these little beauties here. These are what I like to use in tight spots. And this ship is nothing but a series of tight spots. Um, and I had a limited, number, a limited number of blue ones, which I need for the engines. But look at this. Let me kill the overhead light here so you can see but look at it. That's doing exactly what I want it to do. And it is being powered by one three mil blue LED. Using the using the magic of light channeling, it gets the light all the way down to the edge and all the way around. Um, and it looks basically like this. Now let me turn this overhead light back on. Uh, this is the plastic insert piece. I'm trying to keep the camera still this week or as, as motionless as possible. And by this, this is the clear insert that goes between the top half and the bottom half of the nacelle. Now what I've done is I've channeled out just this little bit right here that is just big enough to fit let me see if I can find one here to fit a three mil LED right in there. And by doing that, it transmits light all the way down the rest of it. And that's all you need. So that took, that took away one of the uh, SM LEDs or two of the SM LEDs I was planning to use here. So, um, now I can use what I have got on hand, hopefully as a stopgap until more gets here. But I want to put another blue, and I'm thinking a blue uh, nano, which is even smaller. Let's see if I can get this in front of the lens. That's a blue, well, between my shaking and, there you go. That's a blue, that's a nano SM LED. Now I can put that up inside of here and light this whole clear piece blue and then by using the masks that I have on the front uh, the big circle there you can see the three of them there I can mask off the areas that I want to keep clear and paint the rest of it now here's an example of one that is painted it still has the mask on but that clear piece is now painted and here is, well, again, this is shaky wiring because I'm using the clips, but let me take this apart and show you the anatomy of that. Okay, here's the uh, uh, the tiny, tiny, tiny bulb uh, pushed inside the clear part. So you can see now the circles there are the areas that are masked, but uh, you can see that it's going to take a lot of blocking, a lot of light blocking to... Uh, keep that whole area keep that whole thing from glowing it's going to be tricky we'll see how well that'll happen that's going to take some thick paint to uh, uh, mitigate that but here is the uh, here's the bones of what it looks like once you put a bulb in place you put it in that little cut out there And it shines. I that's the cutout that I made there. And you slide the light. Get that wire out of the way. You slide the bulb in there like that, and it shines down the length of it and makes the edges glow, which helps if you have roughed them up with a little bit of 
the paper de sand but uh, then you've got just these wires coming out now this here is a problem I have to cut these wires off and replace them with uh, the really thin gauge wiring because this is simply too fat to go through the part of the body you see where it has to go in through those wings there and that's a, a very thin narrow and tiny area that uh, is not going to be made easy by putting these fat wires through it so I'm going to have to replace those wires with real thin stuff and then run those in so uh, that might be my job for today plus I figured out what bulbs I'm going to use in the uh, the bridge dome and I can get that area done uh, yesterday I also uh, cut the chases that I need to cut to get from the saucer the uh, roulette wheel down into the rest of the kit let's see it has to sit like this uh, yeah that sits like that so I've got to get from here down into there and into the body so uh, yeah it's a it's a narrow channeling thing to do but uh, if you've got thin enough wire you can accomplish it all right there you go I've got the blue light special going on here got the blue light the uh, one aimed backwards one aimed forwards and it's it's odd this I want to encourage as much light as possible this I want to block as much light as possible but now I think we're ready to uh, to seal it up now I know there's an interlocking tab right there there's tabs that that go into the pins sorry I'm showing you brown on brown but there are interlocking tabs there that go along with the uh, pins on the underside there be the pins so I need to knock those out uh, it goes something like sorry it goes something like that and what I need to do is knock out one set of the either the outside or the inside set of pins to make room for some of this wiring that's coming through but that's the that's the uh, the gist of it I'm going to do up the other one and get them ready to uh, uh, add to this base righty I've got both engines uh, wired up I'm not glued together yet because I'm not quite ready to take that step I need to put a drop of glue on the back even though this kit's basically made to snap together uh, that's never good enough plus when I am channeling out for wires I am uh, removing some of the pins and some of the sockets in in the uh, in the effort to make room for an LED so uh, you got to go back and reinforce those things those joints with glue so what I'm doing now that I've got these guys kind of wired up I'm going to do the top and bottom of the uh, the bridge ball um, what I'm calling it the center the center here uh, and what I want to do is basically tack the LEDs in place with a little CA uh, I've got to put one facing down into here and one facing up into here and what I want to do is uh, tack those in place with a little bit of CA and then I can come back with clear epoxy and uh, fill these areas in to really secure them but uh, just to get them in place because the epoxy isn't going to cure fast enough and these guys like to wiggle all over the place so I'm going to tack them in and then come back and reinforce them okay you can see we're making progress here I've got three tiny LEDs uh, mounted in the front here and uh, what these are these are side mounted sorry these are side mounted white LEDs that will shine down the length and this is a blue LED that is mounted behind the deflector assembly there's a mask over the front of it so that's what's keeping the center from being lit but you can see that those strips are lighting the whole length of the thing and uh, on, on the other hand I have this finally put together which is the uh, saucer and the ball up front and let me attach the power to these two leads so you can see what's going on here and here's what I've got for the saucer you can see the top of the command ball there and the bottom is uh, lit up pardon the shaky 
Um, I'm sorry to say the windows are simply too small to get to. There's a ring of windows on, on the inside of this trench here. And since they're integrated into the decals, it just makes it too tough to too tough for me. Some mad genius out there might, you know, take it upon himself to bore those things out. But for my money, on at least on this first build, that's a that's a bridge too far, no pun intended. So uh, this will go on top of that, and the engines go on the sides. But uh, right now I'm kind of stymied because I am waiting for delivery which at this point will be Thursday. Ooh, I hope it comes tomorrow, but if, it, if it's Thursday, then it's Thursday uh, for the red DK, or DK, or the red uh, LEDs, which I don't have any tiny SM LEDs that are red. That's one of the things I had to order. And um, that will take care of these impulse engines back here, but until I get those, I can't really close this secondary hull up. Um, We'll see how much further I can go on the front here. I might even be able to get to the get that to the point where I can do the painting and everything since it's a simple attachment down into the top deck here. Um, I could go ahead and get maybe even this much done if I want to rush ahead and start painting. Go ahead and get that much done and then attach it to the bottom. We'll have to see how that goes. I think this is a good place to wrap for today but look at this we've got all this light going on now of course there'll be a top on that and then we've got the side lights we've got the engines uh, the warp engines lit and we've got the fronts lit with masks on them of course I'll take those masks off because I want to see all of the bright shiny um, but this is going very well very quickly and uh, like I said, I'm going to be at a stopping point waiting for red surface mount LEDs to uh, finish the rest of this. So I might uh, start uh, masking and painting up here what I can do while I'm waiting for the rest of this to show up. And I thank the maker above for uh, magnet wire because there's not, that's the only way I would... Uh, now in a perfect world, I would probably cut some of this excess out, but that's where all of the uh, resistors are. And I... That just means a lot of useful, uh, a lot of tedious uh, and exacting uh, resoldering of things that I'm not really keen on doing. So uh, that's that's pretty much how we'll, we'll go when it's done. Okay, this is a good spot to end it for today. I've got the back half uh, waiting for the uh, red LEDs, which won't be here till Thursday. Yikes! Um, and uh, the front half which I've got a coat of gray primer on and I am going to let this gray primer sit all night and uh, wait until morning and then I will start the painting on it. Won't try to do any decaling until the whole thing is together but I can go ahead and, and paint as much of it to now as as I can. Good morning and welcome back to the uh, We Discover, the Discover We uh, build. Uh, it is Wednesday, and as you can tell by the fact we've only got two pieces left, these two pieces, and then we'll have a final ship. Uh, but the uh, red SMLEDs are still incoming. They are not due until tomorrow, unfortunately, so uh, I want to get as much stuff done in preparation for that as possible. Which includes today getting the painting done on, and I'm talking about the base coat painting, the base coat painting done on this top part. I've got a little bit of putty in that neck seam, which seems which uh, seems to be the only seam that is looking unseemly. Uh, so that is drying. I've got the coat of primer on this this morning, and that is covering up the uh, window masks. I wanted to uh, show them because that's what the window masks look like on top. I've replaced the original ones with these yellow ones because uh, the black masks on the black paint uh, was not showing up very well, as you might imagine. So uh, in order to take pictures for the instructions, I replaced them with these yellow ones. And um, I've done the same here on the side panels where there's a clear bit, on the impulse engines there where there's a clear bit, and of course the uh, stripes down the warp engines. So, uh, the, and those are covered up now, obviously. 
but what I want to do is uh, let this dry and then I can paint in at least the first coat of what is going to be the base color the base color this is the color of the plastic here so you, you know you can take that as your good as a good starting point well that's almost darn near uh, to me a titanium gold so what it, but it has a little bit of copper in it I'm not going to use copper because copper is too strong I like metallic brown metallic brown is a little deeper than the copper color so I'm going to put uh, maybe a drop of this in for every three drops of that and mix it up and use that as my base color there are darker stripes here that are actually closer to not gunmetal because gunmetal again is too dark but metallic gray is a little bit brighter than gunmetal so those are going to be painted in metallic gray and then masked over so that I can paint this the uh, uh, the car or the uh, the base color on top of that and there though and then there is a darker version of um, uh, of this base color which is almost well to show you on the let me drag the decals out to show you that because these will be replacing the, the painted decal or the paint will be replacing the decals and if you can see them right here uh, it's that color which is a darker brown and that I'm going to be mixing a little bit of this uh, metallic brown with a little bit of the linoleum brown just to metalize the linoleum brown something like that and I'll be painting those details in there which will in turn be covered up with masks so that you can paint the base color around it but uh, that's uh, and I'm only doing that on the for the decals that have no detailing in them now you see how those have detailing in them so I'm not going to try to replace those with paint but these ones that are uh, flat and straight and just uh, a single color those are the ones I am replacing with uh, paint so there you go so let's get these secondary colors on that we can put on now that don't touch any of the other work and that can be drying while I am waiting while I'm waiting for that to dry I can uh, work on some other things okay I've got the uh, areas of general areas painted in that will be masked and the best thing to do is to let that dry. That is the bar, the, the uh, brown, and it is a linoleum deck brown with just just the littlest touch of metallic brown in it to shine it up a little bit. But that's gone on these pieces, and this is a mixture of metallic gray and flat brown, and that's gone on those stripes there, and those will be masked off. And then once that happens. We can do the the overall body color which as like I said again is the titanium gold with just a little bit of the metallic brown in it so those will be the ones I get out next but uh, best thing to do especially on these Tamiya metallics which can be a bit more finicky than than some of the uh, flat colors is to uh, let them dry a good long while and let them cure and um, Go off and do something else. Lord knows I've got enough other things cooking that I need to be tending to. So let me clean up this table here and uh, pull out something else to tend to. Alrighty, well now we've got the uh, areas masked off that we wish to keep the colors that are underneath. In which this case it is that brown. And in this case it is more, more of a uh, uh, metallic gray. But we're ready to... Uh, do a coat of and I went out and picked up something called dark copper which is uh, almost similar to that metallic brown but it's a little bit more copper but it's a uh, darker than the uh, well here's the metallic brown you can see the difference it's not as red not much difference you can see from the bottom of the glass but uh, it looks to be browner and not as red so we're going to use this and the titanium gold probably like like I said like a three to one on these and uh, give this guy a a quick base coat okay I'm testing out my mix here for the base color and I'm using it to spray on the uh, base this is the base that comes with the kit 
and you can see the color that I've created is exactly the same color. You can, the only difference is you can see the uh, speckling of the metallic there. But that's just me spraying on this base. That's shadow there. Any darkness you're seeing is because it's in the shadow. Um, I think I want to go a little more copper than that. A little darker. Just a touch. Okay, I've got the top coats painted on now. Now, the, remember, this is only going to be the base color for all of the tons and tons of wall-to-wall -wall decals that are going to go on top of this. So, uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. And this does look, well, on camera, it looks the right color. In, in real life, it looked a little too coppery. I mean, until you put it next to something that was truly coppery. Uh, here is the... Uh, the uh, Christmas ornament, the Hallmark ornament. And that's even not, not quite as coppery, but it's a lot more coppery. And you can see the difference. So uh, it is closer to the, the titanium gold than it is a copper. So don't let that fool you. I think maybe the red cloth is uh, throwing the perception of the color off a little bit as well. But uh, uh, here we go. We're ready for... Let's go ahead and remove these because we don't need to have these on any longer than necessary. And then what will happen is this will get a, um, look at that, pulling it right off. Beautiful. Uh, this will get a clear coat to make it ready for the decals. Now the clear coat is going to knock down some of the metallicness of it. And of course, once you cover 99% of it with uh, decals, that's going to knock down the metallicness of it as well. I'm trying to hold the camera steady and remove these at the same time. Which, you know, if I was spending more time paying more close attention. Now see, when I put these down, I really didn't press them all that much because they're nice and flat and they lay nicely. They don't uh, have to go around any contours. So I didn't have to mush them down really heavily. So I'm trying to get the, the blade up under a corner here. There you go, see? That's how it works when it goes nicely. Oh, trying to chase this thing around. There we go. There. That wasn't so painful. Um, I'm going to leave the masks over the windows until I do the clear coating. Because I don't want to get those all gummied up. But uh, go ahead and take the ones off of here. And uh, I'll come back to you when that's done. Okay, there you go. You can see how quickly those came off and uh, left those brown shapes there. And uh, we're to the point now where I'm, I'm sitting and kind of waiting on um, waiting on the, LED, the red LEDs to go here in the, in the impulse engines. Once those are in and joined up, I've got the base outside. I put a couple of spurts of red and yellow Tamiya on those to get that base and then uh, to paint it up like a red angel basically to paint it up like one of the red signals and let's see we got this post I got a switch I got a battery cap I got a battery got a little bit of velcro and that's ready to be put together so we're desperately running out of things to do I'm gonna let this sit probably uh, oh I would say it at least overnight. Now, I got those red bulbs coming in in the morning. I'm going to let this set at least uh, two or three hours before I uh, spray it with the clear coat. And then I'll have the clear coat drying all night and getting ready for uh, the final assembly. Welcome back. It is Thursday morning. I am uh, anxiously waiting the mail's arrival today to bring me the 
the remaining two uh, red SMLEDs. So I can slam those in there and get it done. So now I am uh, doing whatever I can do in advance of that, and which includes getting the base ready. Uh, got everything painted up, got the battery, got the switch, got everything wired. What I'm going to have to do is uh, wire the top part, and I'm holding off until I have those last LEDs in, put all those connections together, close this up, pull the uh, wire down through this base, and into the bottom and tie it into the switch and the battery. Both things I cannot do until... Well, that's not true. Well, I can't. I can't close this up. That's what I'm waiting to do is close that up, and I can't do that until the... Uh, uh, until the LEDs arrive. So uh, the last thing I could do is I'm wondering it, I'm wondering if I could make up some uh, clear epoxy uh, red and uh, drop some of that in there like I did the uh, fifth element taxi tail lights. I can mix up some red epoxy and uh, dribble it inside those cavities and have that drying then I can just glue a uh, LED to the back of that red surface. So let's do that. Okay, I've got the red tinted epoxy settling down inside there and uh, it looks so good that uh, should I not get the LEDs in the mail today like I am hoping, and I'm sorry to keep repeating myself, that uh, I'd be tempted to go ahead and put white lights behind there and just close it up. But uh, once you uh, see there you can see the the light shining through them looks pretty good. Once you put a, a red bulb in there, it will really play that up a bit more. It looks kind of orange at this point, uh, which is not a bad thing, but uh, it's not as red as I'd like it to be. So um, now we play the waiting game, and I'll go back over and continue work on the base. Well, three cheers and a tiger for me. Um, it is mail call, and... Uh, Evan's design comes through once again. There are a few things in life you can depend on, but you can depend on the fact that Evan's lighting will send you the stuff as fast as humanly possible. And that just makes life so much easier. But here are my replacements for my or restocking, basically. I got a, a uh, metric ton of lights, but uh, most importantly are the two nano reds that are going to go right in there. And tiny shrink tube. You know how hard it is to find tiny shrink tube? Hold me closer, tiny shrink tube, because you cannot find that in your local uh, in your local hardware store or anywhere. You got a special order of that stuff. So enough of this yammer, and let's get to the installing. Okay, I've got all everything wired in. I've got the new red lights in. Yay! Uh, I've got all of this down to two wires. Yay! Uh, I just need to jam all of that down into that cavity, push these two pieces together, get out some glue, and then uh, I'll be ready for decals. Ooh, we might finish today. Well, the patient is on the bed sheet, and that can only mean one thing. It's decal time. Time to start the decals, and I'm only going to go maybe as far as doing the bottom side uh, today, and then... Uh, let that seal up and cure and then do the top side tomorrow. Who knows? I might get ambitious and do more than that, but let's start small and see how it goes. Now, this isn't the prettiest of underlayments, and I'm hoping that the decals will cover some of the multitude of sins, but uh, at this point, I just need to power through and get it done. So uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah, I've cut apart the decals that I'm going to be using right away. I'm going to start with the bottom because, hey, if you screw up the bottom, uh, you've got a stand to cover that, and people have to pick it up and look at it to see your mistakes. Uh, so, uh, that being said, they don't really have an indication of uh, anything that has to go down in a particular order. So I'm going to start with these big flat ones and then work my way up to this area here. Okay, those went on quite nicely and quite easily, but... Those are also uh, very flat. They go over flat surfaces. Yeah, they kind of wrap down around, but they start out flat. So once we get to the other ones, we might be looking at more more fit, more uh, problems, but we'll find out. Uh, this is going very well. Um, I'll wait to see how that dries in, but now I think I'm going to tackle this bit. 
Alrighty, I'm wrapping the uh, bottom of the saucer with decals. And, you know, I kind of wish if they had, I mean, if they're not going to put the windows in, why put these in? Because you're just making the decals having to wrap around those. Now, I'm hoping these are, these turn out to be as brilliant as the um, Katinga decals are. And will, uh, you know, turn around and snug down around these raised details. But they are giving me fits for no good reason, I don't think. At this point, raised detail is kind of, uh, uh, you know, not going to go unnoticed. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of solver set around them. And then kind of tap, tap, tapping. But uh, let me finish this last bit, and I think that's where we'll stop for today. Now, well, stop for this afternoon at least, because I could still do the back. I could still do the nacelles tonight. Now, I will tell you that I did go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. I did go ahead and shave these guys off, because that sometimes the uh, decal has a hard time lining up with those. And you don't, if they're uh, going to end up poking through the decal, you want them at least to be in the right spot. So, uh, shave those ones down. These ones turned out to be a little bit too big to shave. And these guys, the decals butt up against, so they don't overlap those. I think there are secondary decals that go on top of those. But uh, these guys, see, I mean, this is the problem that I'm getting, is this bit. Now I'll have to wait and go through and kind of punch that down. These ones, uh, you can make slits in the decal, and I should have done that, and I will do it on this one. See those gray shapes there? I can make slits in those so that the, uh, so that these raised bits will come up through them easier. Finishing up the bottom here, I got the other uh, first nacelle done, and what's really handy about these are these two white lines. If you can center up the two white lines going all the way down here, then you can just kind of wrap everything on either side of it. It's a lot easier than I thought because you can't really tell by looking at the decal that there are white lines on in it because obviously it's on white paper. But having those white bits on there really helps as an alignment tool. And then this will be where we... Uh, uh, can finish it off. I'll put these bottom ones on these last two here and that's where we will leave this for today and come back to it much later. All right ladies and gentlemen uh, the bottom of the discovery is decaled. Glossy yes looks like a toy yes I hate it yes this will be taken care of with flat coats and spray uh, but for right now all of the wallpaper or wall-to-wall -wall carpeting or wallpaper decals all of that for right now is done and there's just no way you could do all that with paint so you know you take a uh, take when they're good decals I don't mind using them and these are good decals these are right up there with the Katinga decals as far as quality uh, I have to credit uh, round two they really turned her act around after some really bad decals they have uh, either changed suppliers or just spent more time on you know quality control but uh, these decals are wonderful and uh, they weren't always this way I can name a couple of other round two projects where the decals uh, sucked but this these are not these are actually very good decals and I am proud to eat my words and oh wait a minute there's one more decal i forgot there's one more that goes here finish that one up and then that will finish up the bottom let this cure overnight let it dry and then i can uh, tackle the top and the sides tomorrow i don't know um depending on how long at all that takes and giving them time to dry whether i'll flat coat it tomorrow and be truly done but we'll rush through and see what we can get Good morning, welcome back. It is Friday, the last work day of the week, and we should be finishing up the uh, the Discover We today, the tiny discovery. I cheated a little bit and went on a rampage last night and did the did the rest of the top of the back. I just have the outer ring of the saucer to do, the both sides of the neck, 
and then the markings which have to go on top of they are decals that go on top of other decals so that's another reason why I wanted to, these base decals to have a night to dry before I did that again so uh, without further ado let's get cracking on this uh, I've got a, an order to to get out today so uh, the reports will be few and far between because there'll be a noisy plotter going on in the background so um, like I said let's let check the the uh, progress of last night's so these have all dried in of course they've got that horrible glossy decally wallpaper look to them that hopefully a flat coat will take care of now I've got to go through this morning and bust a few air bubbles and um, put some microset into those to uh, get them to settle down but it came out pretty good uh, pretty good uh, let's get to it okay the top of the saucer is done now and that concludes all of the wallpaper all we have left to do is the markings and I'm gonna let this dry for a good long while before I start sticking down markings because you're putting wet decals on top of semi wet decals and you run the risk of the uh, water permeating through and lifting the wallpaper decal so you don't want that to happen um, the bottom and the sides that I did yesterday should be fine to go so I will save these ones for last and I normally do those ones first you know the big registry ones but uh, we'll save those for last but I've got uh, the pennants and things like that I've got pen I've got to do my pennants I've got pennants to do uh, and some of these uh, little surfacey type uh, details um, I can let those sit uh, I will tell you these wallpaper decals you know it's a love-hate relationship I love to hate them um, and you have to cut Cut, uh, be prepared to cut way more darts in it than they suggest because it makes it easier for it to wrap over these and in some cases fairly sharp angles but the biggest demon the biggest thing you need to worry about the biggest concern you should have upon your wee brain when you do this is to cut away as much of the carrier film as you can cut right up to the edge of these blame decals now watch the decals that have white windows on the outer perimeter because you don't always see those until you've pulled the you know the carrier you pulled the whole decal off of the sheet and realized you cut off some windows i didn't do that luckily but it's a it's a, a risk because those white windows don't show up against the white paper if they had done a blue backed paper like uh some people do when there are white details um for example what uh what um, uh, Mobius did with the uh, space pod, where there was white decals, they put it on a blue back paper so you could see the white decals. On this white back paper, you can't see that. Anyway, I say that to say this. Um, this, I, I learned my lesson on this one because these particularly, these edge ones, had a carrier film that stuck out past the edge of the design and it did not want to uh, pull down around this very sharp angle so trimming the edge of that decal right up until the silver line is uh, what made it work because then you don't have to worry about it flopping over if it was long enough that the whole thing would wrap that would be one thing but the tiny little amount of carrier film that they put on there just sticks out and looks stupid so you know take a couple extra seconds and trim all of that carrier film right down to the decal uh, before you even put it down and then cut more of these darts in it where it has to go into this recess and changes direction I think they say cut one or two cut as many as you like because they'll overlap but that does help it to lay down flat so uh, time to let this dry walk away work on my order and then I'll come back in a bit Okay, you'll have to pardon the plotter noise in the background. I'll speak up a little bit, but here we go. We are one flat coat away from being finished. And you light it up, and it goes like this. Very nice, very nice. Lights on the engines, lights on the uh, impulse. Now there's a little bit of hand brush work to do that I'm gonna wait till after I have flat coated all of the decals before I do that. And here you go, dear friends one silly little flat coat later and all that makes all the difference in the world the uh, the decals are all real looking it looks like a real paint job now and not a fake plastic coated wall-to-wall -wall thing 
Um, I'm still going through with the edge of an exacto exacto edge and just shaving off wherever carrier film still uh, pokes its ugly head. Uh, but that's it. Now I'm going to go through here and touch some detail painting that needs to get touched. And then uh, I'll be ready to uh, add this to the shelf of done things. But there you go. Um... There's that, there's that. The cells look flat, level, square, and all that kind of good stuff. This, my friends, is an ugly joint. This is the top to the bottom here is an ugly joint. And what happened is, even though I thought I was planning enough, I was not uh, channeling out for the wires. Even magnet wire takes up some space, and I had just not channeled out enough space in there for the magnet wire and uh, getting those two pieces to go together was a heartache and a half uh, the second thing I did that was a goof that I would not do again on the next one is on the front of the, uh, the cells on the blue LED here uh, I narrowed it too far I put it, I jammed it too far up into the middle which meant the second these smaller ones were not catching as much light as they should uh, or or light spill as they should so I would probably uh, hunker those back just a little bit so that all three of them can be lit by the same uh, LED and uh, that's pretty much it everything else I think turned out just fine but there you go um, the light carries all the way to the back now I think I did pinch these tips together too tightly and I may have covered over I may have to take a, an exacto out and see if I can scrape up those scrape off the the glue off of those tips because I don't think the light is getting all the way out to here I may have touched that with a little bit of paint that I shouldn't have but uh, once I got the red LEDs in it was just a bang bang to get them done so uh, everything's looking good there uh, outside of this not having the roulette spinning roulette wheel spinning action I think we're good I would dearly love for this to be twice as big as it is easily twice as big um, you know something where the the saucer was maybe uh, five inches maybe six I know that it would make a very long shelf kit to do that but it really does need it to really uh, be able to see all the details big enough that the windows would be indented and not just part of the decals because that really ruins it some too because the decal the decal uh, window shapes are wrong anybody who's watched the show knows all of the windows that they use in any of the cabins are triangle shape well squared off I don't say squared off triangles but triangle shapes with the uh, corners with the corners blunted um, and these are just all little tiny rectangles and I know that's wrong they should be the triangle shaped windows so uh, barring that type of stuff that's what uh, what really sticks out but yeah not a bad not a bad little entry first time uh, entry for the star for Star Trek Discovery and Another one hits the shelf. Well, that's going to bring an end to yet again another one week wonder. In this case, it is the the tiny, the wee, the very small disco from Star Trek Discovery. And I flip the lights on. There you go. Ba bang. Uh, can be lit. Not all that tough. You just have to know your way around some SM LEDs um, and know how to to uh, channel light down the end down the length of a piece of clear plastic so uh, not too shabby not too shabby tall and like I said that's gonna do it now we are getting perilously close dangerously close to not one but two shows that I've got coming up um, sorry they've blocked that bit of sunlight coming in the window um, we've got escape velocity in two weeks uh, a week actually a week from today I will be uh, it'll be the first day of Escape Velocity, a week from today. And then two weeks from today is the first day of 
Wonderfest. Believe it or else. Uh, it's coming, folks. It's coming fast. So, um, running around, trying to get things ready, trying to pack things, trying to see what things will pack, what things won't pack, what things will fit in the car and what things won't. Uh, all of that is going on. So, you know, I'm, the, the videos might be getting scarce for the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm thinking, what, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, in the lead up to uh, um, Escape Velocity, I, might, I probably won't make a video that week, but I'll take the camera and I will record what happens at that show. And if I have time on the Monday after I get back, I should have time. I, I can cut that together and upload it. And then there will not be another weekly video that next week uh, leading up to Wonderfest, but then I'll have a big extravaganza like I normally do with still pictures and video of Wonderfest itself. So that's, that's kind of the tentative schedule for the next couple of weeks, next two, three weeks. So until then, until I'm back uh, seeing you live, be good, be good to each other, try to stay sane, and uh, we'll see you here whenever the next time is.